and down, I'll make you free. How many of you would jump? How many of you would jump? Oh, come on. How many of you, if God said he'd set you free, how many of you would, would turn around? Come on. How many of you would? Come on, do it. One time. Come on. Come on. Let's pretend you, let's pretend you love Jesus this morning. Woo! Hallelujah. How many of you, if, if God said I'll set you free, if you clap your hands like crazy? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God asked you a hard thing, if God asked you a hard thing so that you could be free, you would do it. But because God said, I just want you to love me, you stand like stones. Oh, I wish this was over. Oh, God. Please let me sit down. People, the God of all creation is mindful of you. You need to get loose. You need to get loose. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is not the United States of the Frigidaire. Glory to God. You don't want to be the ones that they say, yeah, the dead in Christ rise first. Church will right on that. Because listen, God is expecting you to worship Him from your heart. And that may take something more than you standing there looking. I wonder what, oh Lord, look what Marlene's doing. Ow. Look at that. Look at there. Look what, look at Carla. I'm telling you. Mm -mm. So you know what? It's no wonder a spirit of heaviness gets to rule in this place. Everybody just stands like they, we're going to sing three, we're going to sing three songs. Pretty soon they'll get done with it. And we can sit down. Do you realize that's not why we're doing it? We're not. We're not singing songs so we can get on to something else. We're singing unto the Lord Jesus Christ so we can go into the throne room of the Father and meet with Him and commune with Him and let Him give us strength and add grace to us so that we can have help in time of trouble. Woo! Jesus! My God! See, you woke up! Hallelujah! Glory. See, you need to remember why you're coming here. If I don't go, she'll call. Well, it, it isn't about if this and if that. This ought to be your habit. Life is supposed to be built around fellowship the other way around so if you're if you're not listen if you were to be here every time maybe you'd feel more like worshiping because you'd feel the presence of God some instead of having to come in here and say God I hope somebody pumps us up this morning because I tell you I'm about dead as a stump you certainly look that way yep I'm going to, I think I'm going to invite one person up here every service for a while so you can see what you look like while you're supposed to be entering into the presence of the almighty living God who created heaven and earth and allows you to breathe. He not only allows, but desires you to. He wants you to have everything. While we were at prayer yesterday, God was speaking to me about authority and about decrees. About, and 
and about speaking things. And I thought, oh God, yes, you did say that to me. And he said, yes, but your people, your people speak something and then they forget it. They don't keep speaking it. Hey, I didn't make this up. He said, they don't keep speaking it and they don't see it done. Sometimes you have to speak it more than once. Sometimes you have to stand. Sometimes you have to allow faith to be in operation. Sometimes you have to decree it and keep watching it. I'm going to tell you something. Just because you're in a bad place right now doesn't mean that's where you're going to stay. Joe, that spirit of poverty was broken. I'm telling you now, God's going to redeem what was yours. God's got to do what he said he would do if you keep saying so. He's going to bring it. Don't fall prey to what the enemy's doing right now. Don't fall prey to what he said. See, I told you. I told you God delivered Eddie Baker. I told you he delivered him a year ago, and, he, and God wasn't done. God didn't do this to him, and he's out. Glory. When God says something, he means it. You need to decide you're going to have what he says. Somewhere on the line, you've got to stop being... Everything about God. Not everything. Not everything that you speak is going to be a miracle. Sometimes you're going to have to do something. Woo! Sometimes you may have to decide that you're going to get consistent with the things of God. And I don't mean two days. I mean months you may have to be consistent with the things of God. You may have to speak it five or six times. Oh, Jesus, help us. But you'll whine every day for months. We have no problem working up a new whine. Just take one of our babies. Just out of our life that we won't have in it. I tell you what, we'll be whiners Ooh, from now Jesus comes. You need to stop whining and start speaking what she mean today? No, she's serious today, though. But he was serious. He said, this is written. Why is this? God said, start speaking stuff. we speaking it. But then people just let go of it. Where's the consistency? Where is the steadfastness in the people of God at becoming believers? It's not, it's not a, it's not a one day, day there, a day here, a day there. Why, my goodness, the church ought to have a swinging door. People are in it so often. Oh, God. Doesn't matter. I'm telling you, God wants to break loose. He wants to break loose. And every time he gets started, y'all sit down and act like he ain't doing nothing. To stand up and begin his glory. You need to twirl his glory. You need to jump his glory. You need to clap for his glory. Woo, Jesus. You need to let him know you love him. He is, he is not, you know what? He was and he said he was God. But, was, but I'll tell you what, most people think he. Just stop in when you want something. Just stop it. You like going for a glass of milk. Well, I got to go to the store and get milk today. Rest of the time, I ain't going there. Mm -mm. No. Just stop in when you're in need. It's good enough. Right now, right now, God wants to renew the things He already said for you. He wants to renew it and refresh it. You decide what you have. Glory. Hallelujah. God was, was so awesome. Last Sunday, did Pat testify this morning? Did you testify this morning? Woo! Jesus. Do you remember last Sunday morning? Were you here? Jesus, okay. And that's...
Hallelujah. <laughs> God last Sunday that he was going he was going to store. He was going to fix that ankle. Tuesday night after service, God paid him a vision, completely restored it, gave him new cartilage. Glory! Hallelujah! And I want to tell you, he came in Thursday night. He came right over here and was dancing in front of me. Hallelujah! Woo. Glory! Praise your name. See, God do what he says. But you got to stop letting go of it. You stop letting go of it and you got to start being consistent with something. You know, when God's making changes in your, in your life, you don't have to do all of them at once. You can do one thing and make it a consistent thing until it becomes a habit. How many of you know that if you eat ice cream every day for a week, you're, you want it every day, every day after that? It's only, it only took seven times for it to become a habit in your life. So, I won't shut up. I won't shut up either. I won't shut up either. You don't have to shut up. You don't have to shut up. Right now. Yeah, Tuesday night. Yeah. Jesus. Yep. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. all the changes at once but you ought to make one and make it make it a good one and I'll tell you what if if something raises up listen I know how it is but if something raises up on the inside of you and gets angry because he got healed you're not doing the thing if you're if you're not getting healed is all right mad at me if you but you're not doing it you're not doing it you need, you need to praise him no matter what. You need to be here no matter what. He comes in here when he can't hardly walk. People stay home from church when they have a hangnail. And he comes whether he can walk or not. He, if he had three slippers, he came. Tell me faithfulness doesn't it does. Yes, it does. Because you see, the more that you are around, around the things of God, the more you're going to absorb the things of God. So if you want to be a strong believer, you need to stay with us. Stay in with us. Jesus. No, I don't. Because some days I don't have it. I don't have it. But I do know this. I know that people are praying and I know that if I get here he'll come. He'll come. Every time without fail. Every time. Every time without fail. You need to come without fail. Let God raise you up. And I don't care if you are a horse I don't care if your legs hurt. I don't care if you 
back is breaking, if you will come and worship him, God will move for you. He will. He will. Absolutely. He will. He is. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Now let's give him one more hand because he is. heaviness is gone now. I, I think it is too. Okay. Praise God. <laughs> Do you realize that God, and, and I have often wondered where, where he came up with the, the concept he has, because he certainly has gone to a great deal of trouble to raise up a people that will serve him from the heart instead of because they have to. He has taken the lower class of people. He has taken the uneducated class of people. He has taken men of all things. He has taken men who are educated he has taken those that are educated he has, is creating a people that he can call his own and that will call him father this is not about where people get in a big line and we see how many of them can lay on the floor because brass knucks will put you there anytime you're ready but that's not what this is about. This is about God raising a people up who reveal himself to, who will take advantage of everything he has and show it to everyone else and recognize that it's not about them, but it's about all these people who are lost and dying and we're bringing them in so we can present them to the Father and God can change their lives as well and he's creating a nation of believers right. yeah. Whew, thank you Lord and you are part of his recruiting officer are you representing him well that did it didn't it I want you to turn with me to John Chapter 1. Yep, big boy. The big boy, yes. Oh, Lord God. Mm, mm, mm. In verse 18, John chapter 1, it says, No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. Yes. Father, thank You for today. Lord, I thank You that not one person in this room is going to be offended and has not become offended already. Lord, that we have mature believers in the house that are receiving Your Word of God with gladness. Yes. Receiving Your Word with gladness this morning that it become a part of them, O oh God. Hallelujah, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated if you're able. You have amplified? Okay, get right over there, and I want you to reread that for me in the, in the amplified, just because it's, it really says it well. So I can put this thing back away, and I won't have to do it then. Yeah, that's good. Yes, please. Read along in yours so that you understand it's all the same. It's just, just worded different. No man has ever seen God at any time. The only unique son, the only begotten God, who is the proven, who is in the proven. Yes. That is in the intimate presence of the Father. Yeah, oh God. Has declared him. He has revealed him. Brought him out where he can be seen. Yeah. 
Yeah. Him, and he has made him known. Yes. Has made him known. See, when God wanted to reveal himself, he sent his son. Just that simple. See, there's no, no big deal there at all. When God wanted to reveal himself, he didn't come down here and walk around his own self. He sent his son because his son is just like him. And if you have seen the son, you've seen the father. That's what the word says, is it not? Then that's exactly what he, what he meant. Okay, Psalms 107. I'm going back there for a minute. Just, just got to read one scripture here. I want you to see something. Psalms 107, verse 20. 20. He sent his word. Did you see that? He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sent his word and delivered them from all their destruction, healed them up, blessed God. That was Old Testament stuff. Did you understand that too? It was there. Jesus was there too. God sent his son anyway to, to show his word being revealed. Sent him. So he sent his word, healed them, and delivered them from all their destruction. All right. Now, we as believers did not see that kind of thing happen but I do know this that on Passover things changed in the book of Exodus when, they, when, they, when he said to put the blood over the doorpost he wasn't kidding he said the blood was going to cover it and the death angel was going to pass over them and they were not going to be harmed they weren't going to be touched because God was doing a work right then Jesus became a Passover lamb and brought forth salvation. Sometimes we don't get what God really did for us because you see, most people don't get the fact that they're already healed. They're already delivered. You don't understand this. These symptoms are here. Does it change who God is? No. How did those symptoms come then? The enemy must have brought them. Oh, you mean the liar. You mean the one who lies to us every day. That's him. He brings stuff and brings it and then you feel it. You forget who God is. You don't realize you're already free. Already anointed. You're already victorious. You're already rich. You're already redeemed. The enemy is already defeated. He took the keys to death and hell and the grave away from him already. Did he not? Did I dream that? I didn't think so. So victory is already won. Your position in Christ is already sure. Jesus. My God, people don't know it until you tell them or until you show them in the word what has already happened. Do you know what's already happened? Have you read about Jesus? Have you found out that he's become your Passover lamb, that death can't touch you anymore? Do you realize that he said he would supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus? He will not allow you. He will not allow you to be in poverty. My God, do you realize that he wants to show you everything? You don't understand, I'm not educated. Neither am I. I tell you what, I got a Holy Ghost that knows everything. I got a Holy Ghost on the inside. If I ask him what to do about something, he will show you. He will show you where to go to get through that. That your contract has been violated and it has to be restored. Amen. See, devil tries to take stuff away, but God's right there saying, listen, 
I made provision for this. It's in your contract. His name's Jesus. So right now, people have got a lot of things going on that aren't supposed to be going on. And once you've been given the authority through Jesus Christ, he said, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. Oh, wait. No, you wait. The word's still the word. And we have to get radical enough to say, you know what, I'm not settling for this. Well, you don't understand, the doctor said, I know what the doctor said. But he lies. He don't mean to, but he's a liar. He tells you what his stethoscope says, his microscope says, what his textbook says. doesn't tell you what God says because it will put him out of business. Why do you think if they can't find him, they want to do further tests because they're going to have to find something wrong with you so they can get some money. They have to find something wrong. People right now are spending Hundreds and thousands of dollars, hundreds and thousands of dollars on either drugs, that's what they are, drugs, legal. They're spending thousands and thousands on drugs, legal ones, or they're spending thousands and thousands on natural remedies, glory. If that's where you are, I'm cool. I didn't say they were illegal. I didn't say God hated them. I didn't say anything like that. But I'm telling you, God has better. You, when you get a hold on who Jesus Christ is, you will be able to trust him instead of trusting a bottle. That's all of us. That isn't one person. Don't get offended. Don't get upset because this is the way it is. His best is I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. So if your soul is prospering, you will no longer need the crutches that you have today. All of us, not just one person, everybody. Because he made the provision, and all of us are growing, some faster than others, because they put heart into it. Am I really being bad? Am I being, I mean, I really am being hateful. I mean, the enemy's saying, you better shut up. You can make people leave. <laughs> well, I'm preaching it anyways, but I'm just telling you, I want you to know. I want you to know. See, you're not the act. <sighs> sometimes it's during, sometimes it's before, sometimes it's after. Sometimes it's all three. But you see, I want you to have everything. Do you realize that what, we, what people spend on medications or natural drugs or natural whatever's, whatever you, whatever's being spent, do you know they're really expensive? You know how I know that? Because I work there, that's why. I know how expensive they are. And I know that oftentimes, depending on your system, they don't work. But people have to buy them nonetheless in order to find that out. So you've spent $48.95 for something that didn't even work when you could have gone here and said, Jesus, I need you to reveal this to me. And he will. You know why we're not running around in divine health? Because we're lazy. So well, on second thought, yes, you are being bad. Maybe you need to. <laughs> because we're late. Well, it is. It's easier to go to the, the store and buy something to pray through and find out what God has to say about something. Whoa. Jude's going to be in trouble today. Do you realize that God has anointed you? Everybody wants an anointing. Come on. Come on. How many of you are anointed? If you are anointed and you say you are, then the anointing should come and destroy the yuck that keeps jerking you in the wrong direction. Ooh. They really get quiet when they're upset with me. You know that? Did you know that? <laughs> 
Once you find out these things, you have, all, you have a choice to make. You choose where you are, or you choose to accept the Word of God. It's your choice all the way. That's why you have some believers who are growing and some believers who have been the same place for the last 10 years. You need to think about it because I don't care how many things God reveals to you. If you don't do anything with them, that's all it was. That's all it was. See, when God shows you something, it's for you. So you can just sit there and say, oh, God revealed this to me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Yes, he did. Now, what are you going to do with it? Because yeah, sure. I want to see something. God can reveal things to you, and if you don't do something with it, God will give it to someone else. He'll give it to someone else who will do something with it. And you will remain where you are. That mean and hateful? Yes, it is. But it is true. This is a day for truth, I guess. I want you to understand that I'm not apologizing for the word because I believe that the word will make you free. I believe it will make you free. If you allow it to, it will make you free. You will get past you When you get over being angry with me and you get over letting the steam run out of your when you get over all the looking at it and you realize that God was speaking it to you, you will find out, hey, come on, bring it. We got into, we got into a, a big, big discussion about diets and so forth the other night in, in class. And we were, talking about, we were talking about the fact that everyone does my good. Most people have at least six diet products in their house <laughs> that has been there forever because they tried it and it didn't work. I was talking about the fact that God will make the connection, and he will. Once you make the connection, you let God reveal Jesus Christ to you, it's coming. We're going to be doing some more about that anyways, but that's just another one of those places where you see the enemy keeps us in. But as soon as God reveals why you, why you eat what you do or why, the way you do, Some people eat because they get upset. Some people eat because they don't. Some people eat because they're bored. Some people eat because they're stressed to the max and they don't know what else to do. Some people eat because they like it. I knew I'd get all of you sooner or later. <laughs> some, people, some people eat because of past things that have made strongholds in their lives and as soon as we make the connection between that stronghold and God begins to tear down that stronghold then things can change and you won't ever have to die it again trust me won't as soon as you make that connection between you and God and he begins to out of the way you will see that he is your all in all and I don't care whether it was your mother your father your aunt Harriet or your dog God is the deliverer who I love that wonderful Jesus we can accept the word yep and step into into a new reality see that's the other thing we keep saying, yeah, but you don't understand, this is real. Some sicknesses are real. Do you know that? Really? Yeah, some sicknesses are real, but God's real. Jesus Christ is real. He wants it stopped. He wants to restore what he took from you. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Yeah. Oppressed of the devil. It wasn't real. It was just what I said. Amen. Some of you need delivered from not wanting to go to church. Well, it is true. That isn't that awful. Besides what 
really be mean all the way around. Uh, seriously, do you, do you really think that, that you just don't want to because you just don't want to? It's like reading the Word. Do you think you just don't want to because you don't want to? No. It's because the enemy has said you don't understand it anyway. You don't have anything out of service anyway. They don't even like you there anyways. You don't have this anyways. But see, the enemy all of that. And God set free so you can come into the house of the Lord and go into the presence of God. Whoo, hallelujah. So the connection can get made. So your life can change. So you will never have to be where you were anymore. Mm, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. You can step into the victory Christ has already supplied for you. John 1. As long as the enemy can tell you that you're too dumb, as long as he can tell you that you don't know enough and that you don't, un you don't have an understanding, as long as he can tell you that you don't realize what kind of supernatural God he really is, as long as he can keep you there, as long as he can keep the blinders on, and as long as, as, long as he can say, yes, but when I go to church, I really feel stupid because all these people are so spiritual. <sighs> they just go right into the presence of God, and it's awesome. Yes. Mm -hmm. You might want to just, just back up and regroup just a little because, you see, that's not even true. Just record. How many of you have a little trouble finding the presence of God sometimes? Amen. You just don't feel like it. You don't want, you know, you're, you're, you're off on your game today or whatever. Amen. So you have a little trouble. You can't even hardly get your lips apart to praise. You can't even get the door open. See, it's, it's, see, it's everybody has the same thing. So you need to know that. You need to know that so that when you come to church the next time, you will realize that you are not the only one that has a little difficulty finding him. Right. Even though right here, you have a little difficulty with it. See, you. Hallelujah. Jesus. John 1. Whew. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with me. God. And the Word was God. The Word was God. Hallelujah. I want you to run right over to Romans 8 real quick. Because I want to do this one too right with it. Mighty God. Mighty God. For in verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life. Spirit of life. Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Did what? Hath made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Glory. Glory. You, you ought to get excited about that. You ought to get excited about that. Because he came so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. Yes, mighty God. Hallelujah. Now, we have, well, a fairly accurate account on paper Of what the word will do. What he's like. Who the word is. Yeah, all right. How trustworthy. How many of you have ever had the word? Any word. Any word come to pass. Whoo, Jesus. So, have you had it more than once? More than once. Okay, so... You, ha you find out how trustworthy God is, right? How trustworthy the Word is. 
then you realize that God did send his word, send his word, and when he sent his word, he gave his word a name. His name is Jesus. When he sent his word, he gave the word a name. His name's Jesus. Now go to, to Psalms 138. I know, but I get, I know I'm in, I, I know it's hurry, but I get excited because I can't wait to, sh to let you see this. I just can't wait. <laughs> it just makes me crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oof. Psalms 138, verse 2. I want you to, I, I never, I didn't get it. Well, I'm dumb. I can't help. I'm not dumb when Jesus comes, but I am dumb in the, in the flesh realm. I may not be the smartest kid on the block, but I tell you something when God shows you you know it Hallelujah. verse 2 Psalms 1 8 I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name he's magnified this word above his name his word is Jesus his word is Jesus he gave his word a name. He magnifies his word above his name. My God, he set Jesus just for you. So that you could have it all. Magnified his word. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. So you know what? Even if, even, um, even if, you, even if you don't know all the, those that are in the Old Testament, you know, you can have Je Jehovah Nisi and Jehovah Rapha and Jehovah Jireh and you can have all, all of those, all these things. You don't even have to know all that. You can just, you can just know, you can just know Jesus because that's all you need today is to know Jesus, to know Jesus, know him and the power of his resurrection. Know him. Woo, Jesus, my God. See, you can know Jesus. You can know God's nature by knowing Jesus. We, we, people get all theological. It just, just tickles me because people think because they get all theological, they got something going on. I, just, I went through the Old Testament and I found out all these things. and I don't, 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 don't. Yeah? I'm glad I got that all studied out. I know Jesus. I know him personally. He's my friend. Hallelujah. He's my brother. He's living on the inside of me. How you doing with your, with your, with your testing and, and your, your theological discussion? Because I'll tell you something. I don't care how many things you know about the tabernacle. I don't care how many tabernacle candlesticks you know about. I don't care if you know about how they're engraved. I don't care if you know who was allowed in and who was allowed out. God is the one that brought you out. He's the one that's bringing you in. Glory. Hallelujah. You don't have to worry about all that anymore. Praise God. And I'm not telling you not to study it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just telling you that if you know Jesus, you've got it all. He'll reveal the whole thing to you. Praise God. Woo, Jesus. Lord God. The Word. Mm, 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 mm. Thank you, oh God. You can know God's nature by knowing Jesus. Sometimes you get all, you get all ethereal and religious and <laughs> mystical and whatever else. You think, I'd just like to go and talk to God. Talk to Jesus. You'll get as, you'll get as far. I, it's great to go to the throne room. Don't misunderstand me. It's good. But see, down here, right here, in the real now, right now, you need, you need Jesus to reveal to you from here. You need everything he's got going on. We need to know what he's supplied when he brought salvation because him and the Father are one and they decided this together. Yeah. 
is what we really, this is where we really have to go, you know? Yes. Hallelujah. We know his name. We know his name. Only that, if you put together, if you put this back together with, with Jesus and you, you start studying this out, you start looking at the things that he's done, the things that he wants to do, the things that he has promised, the things he promised. How many of you know several promises that you're expecting to see magnified in your life, manifested in your life? Want those things to happen. Want them to happen. I want them to happen. For you, I want them to happen. See, you start dwelling on that, and you, you gain this, this, you have an indisputable assurance. I'm talking about State Farm, and you can get him in line any time you want him at any hour. You can at any time. There are no premiums. Jesus paid. So we don't, we have an assurance. Oh my. Indisputable assurance. Assurance. God is doing what he said he wants to do. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In your heart. Mm, 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 mm. Well, especially when you're talking about what we'll do. So we're talking about that. You've got to know that God's going to do it. He said he would. Here and find it. If he said it in here, it's yours already. It's yours already. Then you have to start professing that. You know what? If the enemy has crossed the line. He has, if he has moved his gates in farther than where they're supposed to be, it's time to tell him to get them off of your property because the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Even now it's time to tell you may have tried to tear my marriage up, but you lose. His name's Jesus. You tried to take a job, but you lose. His name's Jesus. You, get, you take this job, he'll give me another one that's better. You take this job, I'll have two more tomorrow because I'm going to bring them. You take, you take this thing, I'll get more. Because he said, I trust him, not you. Isn't it amazing? Everybody looks at the devil and says, that little red thing with the pitchfork. Tail, and they, that's how they see him. And they, all, and they all fear him. Isn't that amazing? God said he's a defeated foe. Is what caused men to tremble? You need to understand, no, we're not making railing accusations. Just know who your enemy is. Know who your enemy is. Because I'll tell you what, Jesus already defeated him. He's already been displaced. He has no authority over you or anything you have. His contract has been eradicated. Woo, thank you, Lord. He don't have a contract with me anymore. Now we just need to understand that the one who called us well, yeah, called us out so he can call us, so he can bring us in. I said that to you already. Yes, you praise God. God who promised you will fulfill every promise to you. You have to say which one you want. Well, I thought he'd just bring them. No, he wants to talk. He, was, he is not a convenience store. You need to talk to him. And if you're having difficulty standing in one area or another, not everything, but one area or another, you need to get someone to stand with you. Some of you have mates. Hello. If you're having difficulty, you need to say, hey, man. I need you to stand with me about this. Help me with it. Encourage me with this. Remind me that God's doing it no matter what it looks like. Yeah. Hallelujah. You have a prayer partner. 
Tell them, you need to remind me that God's doing it. You need to help you with me, yes, and agree with me, yes, but remind me that God already promised. Remind me that it's already mine. Remind me so the enemy doesn't get to tell two lies. Amen. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. You need The one who visited you is staying. He's not supposed to be a visitor. He's not an overnight guest. You don't have to leave the light on for him. He's here. He's here and he's staying. He's here and he's staying. Did you get that part? Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to stop right there. Well, yes, I think you should probably. But that's to, that's to make you want to be here for Tuesday. You'll want to be, be here Tuesday. I'll tell you some more. Come Tuesday and I'll give you some more. Isn't that lovely? Praise God. 